Hi, I am Roberto Alvarez. I'm the executive director of the GFCC. The future of innovation and universities is a key topic in which we have been working on. We do that mobilizing a global community that includes corporations, government agencies, and private sector entities from more than 30 countries. I had a chance to sit with Professor James Madsen and Dr. Kate Roy from the University of Auckland to review the trends shaping the future of higher education. Among other things, we talked university strategy and the imperative of local community engagement. I hope you like the conversation, but also that you can download the paper they have created for the GFCC. Please don't forget to sign up for our social media channels for updates on the future of universities and innovation. I think the global pandemic has really brought to the fore some of the issues that the universities were already grappling with. So online learning is a perfect example. Uh, universities were forced to switch to online learning really quickly and that's continued to evolve alongside the pandemic. But this has also highlighted the benefits of a relational based higher education experience. So I think that universities uh, going forward will be looking at ways to maximise the benefits associated with online learning while also providing really rich um, in-person interactions to complement those online experiences. And I think what is changing and what is changing quite rapidly is that that traditional linear pathway like, will be less important than short-term contacts with the university, the, the rise of micro-credentials, the rise of gaining different skills uh, through a university, not through a three-year degree, but through you know six-month intensive or uh, packaged courses, um, which access different communities of learners than our traditional linear pathway. The pandemic has really amplified calls by government for universities to demonstrate their educational value, their social impact and their community leadership. So universities are now expected to become um, accessible and responsive and they're also expected to lead by example um, and to really integrate themselves into their communities. So a good example of this is in relation to climate change, where increasingly universities are expected to become zero carbon in their operations as a way of demonstrating uh, their leadership in this area to the broader community. I, I think that one of the critical things that um, Universities, almost universally, um, and certainly the experience in New Zealand and in Auckland, um, we need to improve our relationships with our community. Actually, I think um, we can do much more with much closer interaction um, with our communities and our stakeholders. Um, and. Uh, and I think that requires a willingness on both sides, community and university. Earlier this year, the University of Auckland released its 2030 strategic plan. A strong focus of the strategic plan is around transdisciplinary research. And transdisciplinary research is about researchers working alongside each other, um, alongside colleagues from other faculties, but also working with external stakeholders. So we're encouraging our researchers to work together and work with our community partners to co-create research and work together towards finding solutions to the, the big issues facing our communities. Just caution in one sense, and that one of the roles of universities certainly is to drive that and support that entrepreneurial and innovative 
uh, environment um, for economic transformation. But equally important is social transformation and the breadth of influence, the span that, that universities, um, the way that they can interact with their communities is quite broad in that sense. I think the biggest challenge facing universities is demonstrating their ongoing relevance and value in a rapidly changing society. So to do this, universities are going to have to work hard to integrate themselves into their local communities, and this will require them to be more open and more willing to do things differently. Uh, for example, I think universities will need to be more willing to, for their staff and students to move between industry and other organisations and academia. It's also going to require universities to co-design research with local partners, and this will require working hard to establish meaningful reciprocal relationships with community stakeholders and working together to co-design solutions. If you go back to our conversation on transdisciplinarity, um, the university is part of a number of international networks, collaborations, um, as we must be to share knowledge, um, to work collectively on, on, on problems. Now, most of those networks that we are part of are classical networks of university partners. GFCC offers us something quite different, I think, in that it is a, a very different group of collaborators, of thought leaders that we can be exposed to. Uh, who bring a very different and at times quite challenging perspective to the university partners, I think. Um, because of their different relationships both to, to government and to, uh, to business. Um, and therefore it gives us, I think, a different perspective on how universities, uh, where we fit in the, in, the, in the greater plan of things. Um, and therefore I've found it quite a rewarding experience and I think it has been beneficial to us as a university to be exposed to a very different community of thinkers.